Merlin, Network Magic, Chatbotting. Hey everybody, John Capobianco here, and what I thought I would do is um, and maybe go a step further with um, just a, you know, a new job inside of the Merlin collection, which I'm certainly going to push up tonight. But what I hope to do today is, is to finish that work and then also create a new Git repo with is dedicated just to the chatbot. And in that theme, what I thought I would do is set up a dedicated WebEx channel with an open ID that the playbook just runs. And the only thing in theory you need to do is to spin up the DevNet sandbox against the Nexus 9K and then go get a 12 hour token from the developer.webex.com, plug that into the GitHub repo that you clone, and then you can run the job and start sending WebEx messages into this open channel. And it'll let you play with the canned stuff, or if you want to add your own adaptive cards or your own messages for different commands, we'll have a repo just set up for that. So let's go ahead and set up the room um, for this. So I've logged in to developer.webex.com and I'm going to go to documentation and I want rooms. So I'm going to go to the API reference guide here and I'm going to find rooms and I want to post, right, create a room. And I can do this right from here inside of the browser, but let's take it into Postman and make a new request inside of my WebEx collection in Postman. So I'm going to copy the room. I'm going to hop over into Postman under my WebEx. I'm going to make a new request called, right, um, create room and this is a post and that is the URL. Now I need my token and the authorization and I need to see what the JavaScript structure is. So there's a title, a team ID and a classification. User friendly name for the room, team ID which is associated with the room, I don't have a team ID and the classification, I don't have a classification. So the only thing that's required is the title. So we're going to do this in JavaScript. I need the bearer token, so let's copy that and get that set up inside of the authorization bearer token. I'm going to paste that in and save this. And then in the body, I, I'm going to do raw JSON and I'm going to open and close this and say, I believe it's just title. Let's make sure title. Okay. And let's put this in JavaScript title is, and this is the dev net sandbox nexus nine. Let's do 9,000 instead of nine K and let's try to post this. Well, look at that. I got a 200 status back and it looks like I have created the DevNet Sandbox room. So let's go into WebEx and let's also get rooms. So let's do get rooms and I need my token again. Let me just make sure that's in my copy paste buffer and let's go get rooms and refresh the token and run this. And hey, look at right at the top, there's my latest room, the DevNet Sandbox. And let's confirm in WebEx, there's the DevNet Sandbox. So I'll give this a little logo. I'll probably give it, I don't know, the DevNet logo or something. And um, for now, it's just me. But this, now that I have, this is the important thing. I have this room ID. So now in my pyats.conf, my config file, I can put this ID and my token and start logging my PyETS jobs to this room. I can then also inside of my Python variables simply change the room from my Merlin main room to this new room and start feeding my test data there as to not spam and overwhelm my users. So I'm going to go from there. I'm going to start building on our uh, what the next command is that I'm doing is the We've done learn platform, which was a fairly static data set. And we pick and choose what we want to send one, a markdown header, learn platform, and then an underline with a hash sign in front of it in markdown to make it a big, bold learn platform. Then the markdown representation, um, which is basically two columns of data, the you know serial number and then the serial number 
fed in as a variable from the JavaScript object we've learned. And then we made an adaptive card that is kind of like the Markdown, but it's like an HTML-ish Markdown business card with hyperlinks and buttons and logos and all kinds of great stuff. The other thing we've done is attach the CSV version. So we're going to do all those same things, but I'm going to try it with something like Learn Routing. And can I go per VRF, per address family, per route, and make an adaptive card or a markdown message and attach the whole thing as a CSV file? So I'm going to develop that in the background once I have it all working. We'll come back and I'll show you how it's done. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so I've, uh, I've had great success. I have two learn functions and two parse show commands that create their own adaptive cards and attach their full files. And I want to show you something pretty neat. And I had a little bit of help from the feedback in the PyETS and my Merlin channel community. So again, the only thing that you'll need to do when you clone this repository at home is follow my instructions from earlier on how to create your own room ID and get the room ID. And, and you know, this is going to say in the repository, you know, your room ID here replace that with your room ID and then replace the um, token with your 12 hour token and that's all you should have to do and then you'll start getting these cards and you can start developing your own cards so again I have the four basic right not basic but I learned the platform learn platform learn platform here learned routing show IP interface brief, show VRF. So those are the four. And then each of them basically have the same code block where um, I'm defining their two templates that I'm using. And this template, I haven't changed anything. Again, all I've done is add the XLS. I'm feeding the file type of XLS into my existing Merlin template, which I've adjusted to have a if it equals CSV or if it equals XLS now generate the CSV file or an XLS file so that's my little trick for that and then here again we need to import and include not only requests but but the tool belt multi-part encoder so we can get at multi-part encoder so that we can attach files all right, and then in WebEx, I'm sending Jinja templated, uh, and it's kind of neat for platform. I'm just sending the whole platform information in. But if you look at routing, I actually have built in some logic to say only if it's the default route, put it in the card. And then in the button of the card, I'll show you the template for this one. In the button of the card, take you to a link to the full thing. Now, right, this action button can open a URL. So this could be an internal URL at your company, your GitHub repo, a, 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 I don't know, a Microsoft SharePoint document library where the CSV or Excel file is indexed already in SharePoint. Take this button and link your user to the SharePoint document library or the GitHub repo with the full thing. So I've pre-staged this one file in the GitHub repo and when I push this full thing up, there'll be full examples in the buttons that you can use to point to the full data set. And I'll show you why that's important. Um, it was getting a little spammy, let's say, with uh, a card per route, per address family, per VRF. And someone in the community suggested, why don't you just post the default route and then a link to the full data set, which is what we've done. So again, here... Everything below this should be the full run. We should get four cards and four different attachments. Uh, and let's run it. And let's put the time command in front of it just for the sake of seeing how long this all takes. And now that's also over my poor VPN tunnel. Um, but it doesn't take long at all. And, and watch the messages come in here in the WebEx. Let's stagger them as it runs in the background. Um, these cards should start coming in and here they come so there's the platform and the attachment 
There's the default route for the management VRF and the full attachment. There's show IP interface brief, which we'll come back to. And here comes show route at the bar, or sorry, excuse me, show VRF. So those are our four commands. And let's take a look at the cards. So we have the platform information, which you've seen, and this takes you to the full blog post on how to follow this and build this yourself if you need some help, right in the card. And then this takes you to the Merlin repository if you need to clone the repo or share the repo or give it a star. <laughs> and now here, again, we have the logic to say, and this is pretty smart. Um, this actually has two VRFs. There's also the default VRF. But you kind of say, well, where's the card for the default VRF? Well, there is no default route in that VRF. That may or may not indicate a problem to operations that, well, where's my default VRF card or VRFX's card? Oh, where's the default route? Or, and here's the next hop. And you can see that I'm getting it statically. If, if it's being, um, inject it in or redistributed or if I'm taking it downstream through OSPF or something we'll learn that through the source protocol and then here right see the full results right in the card yes I have the attachment here but this button takes me to right the actual full set of routes not just the default route and as suspected there's the default route for management but we can see that default only has the local attached and direct routes. There is no default route. Pretty cool. So then this one's really neat. And I don't know how big, right? There is an upper limit. There really is. But I happen to get fortunate that um, I was able to fit everything from show IP interface brief into this one card. So we have the interface VLAN and the IP address. And is it up or down? And then for the physical interface, the IP address, and is it up or down? Now, I actually have to apply some logic because of the, the JSON structure here to normalize this. And then, um, you know, the message Merlin has provided the information for the DevNet sandbox. That's a variable using PyETS show IP interface brief so that people know where this data came from. And then again, see the full routing table. That will take you to the full routing table. Oh, I'll have to change that results of learn route anyway uh, that's good I, uh, I'll change that cosmetically to say full results of show IP interface brief and then again we have the Excel file which I just can download and open and there it is right there is the IP interface brief table I have all of this on my phone and then finally just show VRFs and we can see that I have two VRFs and they're both up and I have the Excel file so again, this is just a real quick video to wrap it all up. The code is coming. I'm literally going to scrub out some things and replace them with the, you know, your code goes here, your room ID goes here, your password goes, your token goes here. I'll push all this up. You'll have the sample data and those four cards to work with and play with. And feel free to submit your own card, right? Tackle, um, show VLAN or right like feel free to use this code base as a way to learn yourself set up your own room send the information to your room if you want to join the Merlin room and use my room to show the people in my room what you've come up with that's a possibility too so good luck and have fun with WebEx and chatbotting and PyATS and Merlin stay safe everybody